So this is my first uh, screencast. I came up with this technique to deal with this weirdness that I've noticed uh, happens with doing reaction diffusion in Touch Designer. Uh, and reaction diffusion in this method is kind of like the classic Photoshop trick where you blur and then you blur again and then you do a difference between your previous blur uh, and your first blur and you sharpen it out. Uh, and then you just do that over and over and over again. So if you watch, uh, we can reset it. We can watch it kind of grow. And it's cool, it does kind of have like the coral, like brain uh, wrinkles that we want, fingerprints, but it's a little bit circuit boardy. And as far as I can tell, the reason this happens to be is this particular trick, the blurring uh, twice and sharpening twice is still uh, subject to to rounding errors. So you're kind of taking advantage of the rounding errors in the system. But the rounding errors that we're dealing with right now are in a grid. Uh, they're, they're pixels. So the, the pixels that you're dealing with are square and they'll have a tendency to go up and down like these or, or left and right. So they're kind of perpendicular. While in nature, of course, they're kind of random. So the best way to to kind of beat this i found is just to randomly to randomly rotate it before and after your operation so the the operations always have to happen after the feedback we can actually make this bigger so let's run the run it again so even on bigger ones you'll notice you'll still have the uh the right angles here but so first thing we're going to do is we're going to just get a random rotation and to do so we get a noise chop Drop it right there, and we actually want to get a different rotation for every frame. So we're just going to time slice it. And the amplitude in this case is 180. So it'll go up and down 180 possible degrees. And instead of having it be noise, we'll just have it be random. So here it is, just jumping around once every frame, giving us a new random value. And then from here, We'll kind of want to drop a transform chop. Uh, and we'll drop another transform chop on the way out before it hits the null again. So here we go and back. So I'll just turn that off so you can see it more clearly. Um, here we can choose how much to rotate and I'm just gonna drag this over here and do a chop reference and so you can see it randomly jumping around. When I tie it back into here, it's gonna get all scrambled. Um, if we were to look at it, it wouldn't be all that pretty. Uh, so, the, tran the second transform, we do the same thing. Take this, drop it into its rotation. But we actually want to do the opposite with it. We want to rotate it back. And then here you see it scrambles and then it unscrambles every frame. The problem with this, of course, is the rotation that you're going to get is going to cut off all the corners. Because if you uh, stop at any particular frame, uh, that rotation, you know, those corners that are here, or that, that are here are going to be all the way up here and it's going to get cut off. We'll deal with that in a second. But for now, we can just try it again with the feedback. Uh, we'll pulse it and we'll see that instead of looking like a circuit board, uh, it, looks, it looks more evenly squiggly. That's a way to, to say that. So we can actually try it with like smaller values as well. And sure enough, you get the, uh, the coral behavior. So how do you deal with the, uh, the fact that you're getting your corners cut off? You actually want to drop another top 
in, I think in this case, uh, I kind of want to do whatever the opposite of cropping is. I want to grow it by the amount that's going to get cut off. And then I want to crop off that amount at the end. So it's a similar hack. Um, but, you know, there's really, it turns out that you actually can crop, you can do a negative crop. So if I do negative 0.5 here, whoops, sorry, do a negative 0.5 here, you can see it repeats. And I do a crop right 1.5 here, the same thing on the bottom and top. Negative 0.5, 1.5. And instead of repeating, we'll just do zero. So here you can see that there's a whole bunch of extra space. Um, you don't want to tie this in yet because uh, if you tie it into the feedback, then every frame it'll just make the thing twice the size. And uh, within three frames, you will, or maybe 10 frames, will be out of memory. So you want to bypass that so it doesn't run right away. Tie it in. And then right after your transform and before your null, you want to do the opposite of that. So you want to do 0.25. Want to crop off the first quarter and the last quarter. Whoops. And the same here. And that one is actually okay to leave in there. Uh, if you run it, then in a couple of frames, it'll just keep cutting off more and more until there's nothing left. And you'll see, oh, oops, it's gone now. So you have to refresh, and you can see it disappear again very quickly. So if you now activate them both, and you refresh, then suddenly everything's fine. You can see here you grow by that much. Spin it by however much you want chop off that extra and 100% of your screen is doing uh, reaction diffusion in a very, very natural way. Uh, and that's all I got for you today, guys.